Welcome to the Francis Land House. We're here to tell you a story. You might think it's the story of one house, or even one place. And hey, you'd be right. But there's more. This is an American story of the search for freedom, the struggle, the hope, and the fight that continues even today. So picture this. It's 1805. The American Revolution has been won, the Constitution and Bill of Rights have been ratified, and we the people are building a new nation. Francis Land is building a new house. Born in 1785, he had excellent standing in Princess Anne County because he was standing on the shoulders of five other lands. Ouch! His great-great-great-grandfather was a cooper who came to Virginia in the 1630s, and the family gained power through friendship, marriage, and positions in the local government and church. Their prosperity was also fueled by the labor of enslaved Africans. Slavery was entrenched in Virginia society by the 1700s, and by 1819, Francis owned 18 enslaved people who worked his plantation and served in his home. And because they were considered nothing more than property, they were taxed, just like his cattle and horses. But as a landowning white male, Francis's life was good. Unlike women and people of color, his freedoms were protected by the Constitution and Bill of Rights. He was able to serve in Virginia's House of Delegates in 1810. He also married Anne Gardner and had two daughters, Mary Elizabeth and Anne White, and settled down to a nice, peaceful life. Until... Not again! Yep, welcome to the War of 1812, or the Second War for Independence. Britain placed trade restrictions on the U.S. and blockaded the Chesapeake Bay. So Francis put on his uniform and joined the Princess Anne County Militia, who tried to keep the British out so the Redcoat raiding parties couldn't seize water, food, and supplies from shore. The militia also wanted to keep enslaved Virginians in, so they couldn't run away to freedom on British ships. More than 40 skirmishes occurred in Princess Anne County, plus several hundred encounters at sea. But for the most part, the drama happened elsewhere. Hello, burning of the White House and waving of the Star-Spangled Banner. By 1815, the war was over, and Francis was enjoying the peace. For now. In the 19th century, death was just a disease, infection, or difficult childbirth away. Francis's wife Anne died in 1815, and his second wife, Nancy Haynes, died less than a year after their marriage. Look out, Francis! In 1819, death came for Francis, too. He was only 33, and his young daughters were orphaned at the ages of six and four. While the death of their parents was surely traumatic, the land girls moved in with guardians in Norfolk, where they grew up in comfort and luxury. But for his enslaved people, Francis's death brought trauma of a different kind. Separated from friends and family, and rented to new masters on an annual basis, they faced harsh conditions and the strain of constant uncertainty. Yet the land girls prospered and married well. In 1853, the Francis Land House was sold out of the family. Enter the 1860s. That's when all those social, economic, and political divisions rooted in centuries of slavery came to a major boiling point, the Civil War. The Francis Land House was shaped by the upheaval of war, although no battles were fought here. Federal forces seized much of Princess Anne County, and this property became a government farm and a haven for free and runaway African Americans. Here, where generations of their ancestors labored in bondage, black women grew food for hungry Union soldiers, including their own sons, husbands, and brothers in the U.S. colored troops. In a land where teaching a black person to read or write was once illegal, a school for African Americans was established on a nearby farm. It's possible the school even moved onto this property for a short time, an important symbol of hope in a changing land. The Union victory brought the possibility of freedom, but not for all, and not all at once. Slavery had ended, but Reconstruction began a dark era of segregation, difficult economic conditions, and continuing oppression of women. In 1912, Junius Thompson Sheets moved in with his family, they were settling down for a nice, quiet retirement when World War I began to bring in the military, which grew the region's economy and population. 
Prohibition brought hidden stills and bootleg liquor, thanks to all the farms. The Great Depression. Seriously, thank you, farms. Lots of agriculture meant the economic crash was less devastating here than in the big cities. At the Francis Land House, new tenants showed up. A Sheets relative, Jenny Sheets de Fries, moved in with her husband Raymond and five kids. They turned it into a dairy farm. And then, World War II. Turmoil in Europe and the Pacific meant military expansion in Princess Anne County. Life on the home front wasn't easy. Sugar was rationed. Shoes were rationed. Even rubber was rationed. And if that wasn't enough, then the Germans invaded. No, not like that. They came as prisoners of war, or POWs, and there were more than 6,000 of them at nearby Camp Ashby, mainly soldiers who had fought with Hitler's Africa Corps. With so many local men fighting for freedom overseas, a labor shortage meant the majority of the POWs weren't kept behind bars. They worked, and were even paid, at fertilizer companies and farms. At the Francis Land House, Jenny DeFries brought sandwiches to the two German POWs who lived in the pump house and worked on the dairy farm, even as her only son, Lindsay, was commanding an army battalion in Belgium. In 1945, the Allies won the war. But on the home front, struggles continued for true freedom. African-American soldiers who fought as equals came back to racist Jim Crow laws, and women who worked during wartime weren't always ready to go back to life as homemakers. And the Francis Land House? The DeFries sold it in the early 1950s, and it became, well, what's the exact opposite of a dairy farm? That's right, a fancy ladies' dress shop. Wedding gowns, prom and cotillion dresses, fashionable resort wear. The Rose Hall dress shop was the place to go for the latest styles. But times changed. Casual was in, formal was out and the Francis Land House became museum material. Today, the Francis Land House stands witness to a rich history of change, from a fledgling democracy to the enduring quest for freedom, from the oppression of women and minority groups to the fight for equal rights. Over time, even the definition of what it means to be American has grown and changed. And you can learn more right here at the Francis Land House.